the grandson of the former British political agent to Kuwait, M. Colonel or Mr. Colonel Harold Dixon and his wife, Mrs. Violet Dixon, Mr. Stephen Freeth, son of Mrs. Zahra, and also welcome uh, the Kuwaiti British relationship researcher and British Empire medal holder, Mr. Isa Yahya Deshti, BEM. The National Library of Kuwait is holding an uh, exhibition and a symposium on the occasion of the visit of Colonel Harold Dixon's descendants to Kuwait on the occasion of the 125 years of Kuwaiti British partnership. Mr. Stephen is one of the people who lived and witnessed a special era in Kuwait and Britain, especially since he lived for a period with his grandmother, Mrs. Violet, God bless her soul, uh, Violet uh, Dixon, as the Kuwaitis call her Um Mus'ud. Mr. Stephen is one of the uh, two, uh, one of the people who lived and witnessed a special era in Kuwait and Britain, especially since he lived with, uh, for a period with his grandmother, uh, Mrs. Violet Dixon. So we uh, are really honored to have you, Mr. Mr. Uh, Stephen Freed, and it's my honor uh, personally to uh, have this I exclusive interview with you, sir. Thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Zakaria Deshti, and you know, well known, <laughs> and definitely, uh, uh, <coughs> and uh, definitely, we are really uh, uh, having, you know, really a, 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 a huge information, uh, historical information between the relationship uh, Kuwait and UK. So let's uh, start. Uh, tell us about <coughs> your memory, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Free. I came, I came to Kuwait in 1970. In fact, I came to Kuwait as a baby. Oh. Uh, I was here in 1953, 1954, but as you can guess, I don't remember a great deal about it. There are some pictures of me in Dixon House wow. uh, with my mother, uh, but, uh, but don't ask me to be for any memories <laughs> of that. But in 1970, yes. when I was 17, before I went to university, I came and stayed with my sister Penny okay. and my mother in Dixon House with Dame Violet, or um, yeah. uh, and we were here for one month. One month? One month. Was it in the winter or summer? It was, it was I think, spring. Spring, uh, okay, it, amazing. It, uh, I, Forgive me if I, I can't remember precisely, but it was yeah. one month. We were able to go out into the desert. It wasn't desperately hot. Okay, so it good, must have good, been avoiding. Good, good. So that's why I was asking you about it. It must so have been avoiding yeah. the hot season. It was certainly warm, but it wasn't hot. Yeah. Uh, and we were here for a month. Mm -hmm. uh, we lived in the house, uh, and we went out for trips during each day. Okay. Uh, so we, we learnt both about life in the house yeah. and we also learnt about uh, Umar Saud's friends in Kuwait, in her Kuwait, friends yeah. in Kuwait and the places, neighbors. the neighbours yeah. and her, she had friends everywhere. This yeah. was one of the things which uh, was very striking that we, we could go from f Kuwaitis from the highest to the lowest. Mm -hmm. Uh, she had friends everywhere, wow, and uh, yeah. of course, she she had fluent Arabic, yeah. and my mother, because she had grown up in Dixon House, yeah. uh, she had fluent oh, Arabic. Oh, she knew too. Oh Amazing. yes, oh yes, she yeah. had fluent Arabic, so <coughs> she could speak to anybody. She could understand and join in with a conversation. Any conversation that Umar Saud was having, uh, Zahra could join in as well. Mm. Um, my sister and I, of course, we don't have Arabic, <laughs> so we are sitting there patiently waiting. <laughs> so waiting for <both> translation. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Grandma would tell us would tell us what was being said. But no, we could go, we could go to uh, the desert. Uh, we went to the desert, uh, and at one stage, uh, we I was uh, we went to the neutral zone. Okay. I don't know if it exists anymore. The neutral zone out to the west. Out to the west. Uh, uh, out to the west. Uh, maybe maybe. Definitely, uh, Mr. Dashti will uh, explain for us uh, that. So, uh, and I could stand. Grandma said, "There's absolutely nothing to see. No mm. border. Yeah. Just grass, yeah. gra grass and sand." Yeah. 
and I had one leg in Iraq, <laughs> oh, oh. One, leg one leg inside oh, okay. Arabia. So now I got it. Yeah, yeah. the border, the, the neutral border, zone yes. in the border. Okay. And one yeah. one arm in Kuwait. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and so doing doing like this. <laughs> and there were yeah. and there were some Kuwaitis there uh, having coffee around the fire. Yeah. And they were the customs men. Okay. And of course they all said, "Omar Saad, hello. How are you?" Oh, so, so we all had coffee her. with the yeah. customs men. <laughs> amazing. That's 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 a beautiful uh, experience. <coughs> So, ha, did you love it? Yes, uh, it, it was a great privilege, mm. and it was it was a, a real surprise mm -hmm. because when you come from school in England, mm -hmm. uh, this is all ever so slightly different. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, people people were very kind. Um, we went, as I say, we we talked to the customs men. We also went to the gosh, the Masila Palace. Yeah, uh, one of uh, one of. Uh, Umar Saud's friends was Sheikh and Nouria, uh, the okay. wife of Emir Sabah Salem. Yeah. And Late she Emir, was yeah. a friend of Zahra's from long ago, oh, okay. as well as of Amazing. Dame Violet. And so they, they, they fell on each other with joy. Okay. Uh, and uh, there were the, uh, then everything went slightly wrong because I was, I was there, and so Nouria says, oh, Stephen must go out and look at the gardens. Okay. Uh, so I went out to look at okay. the gardens. Oh. Un unfortunately, yeah. uh, Nouria didn't uh, forgot to tell the police. Okay. So oh. I went off to look at the gardens, and I was then arrested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they th they thought you are an intruder. They did. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't really look like an intruder, but <laughs> I was arrested. <laughs> exactly. So, that, so then I was dragged back, and Nouria said, "No, no, stop, stop." A youngster, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> mingling around. That's okay. right. And uh, that was really that. <laughs> that's a good experience. Uh, they were terribly nice. I mean, yeah. I arrested. They were the nicest police you could possibly have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that was really an uh, amazing experience, Mr. Freed. So, uh, Isa, uh, could you tell us about the importance uh, of the Dixon family in Kuwait and the history of Kuwait? Uh, Mr. Dashley, you know, this is really uh, something we could say uh, the turning point or let's say the, the, the cornerstone of the relationship between Kuwait and UK. You know, the Dixon family, they are first come to Kuwait in 1929 when they oh. are a British political agent, mm. uh, Colonel Harold Dixon and his wife, mm. uh, Mrs. Violet. And they are love Kuwait because, especially uh, the Colonel Harold Dixon, because he have a very good background with the Arab life mm -hmm. and um, the language also that it's make easier his work here mm -hmm. in Kuwait. Uh, so the important things they are doing here in Kuwait if we don't speak about the social life, because if we, I want to speak about the social life and the relation, they have the greatest uh, relations and the social life here in Kuwait with the ruler family and with the uh, all, all types of the people here mm -hmm. uh, in Kuwait. And each one in Kuwait who's lived in their period life, they have a story with them. Exactly. But the most important things they are doing here in Kuwait, they are written the Kuwait history mm -hmm. in a different angle yeah. or different uh, exactly. from different perspective uh, yes so uh, still now all the specialized all who is studying history master or phd yeah. they are should go uh, through the dixon family books from like uh, arab desert kuwait neighbors 40 years in kuwait the wild flower or Kuwait was my home, and many many other books that uh, mrs zahra she's wrote it about kuwait i think because they are written about the two life mm -hmm. inside the city mm -hmm. and the uh, desert life, the desert life yes, yeah. and by the details. And oh. what the uh, uh, nice thing in their books, they are supported by the photo, by the drawings, or for all uh, so what they are saying. and documents. Yes, uh, for, for, for that. And also, we didn't forget the most important things in that, in that time. No, not everybody have a camera exactly. here in Kuwait. Exactly. So Mrs. Viola Dixon, she have a very wonderful many photos for uh, Kuwait, the life, uh, in Kuwait. The life in yeah. Kuwait from the sea, from the Dows, yeah. from houses, yeah. from the Emir. Exactly. And she published in, in, uh, in her books and also Mrs. Zahra and uh, Colonel Dixon. Mm -hmm. So always this important... Uh, uh, doc documents they are giving to Kuwait yeah. through their letters, books, uh, interviews. The efforts uh, of colonel. Yes, yes, they, they, they are they are keep and save part of Kuwait history through that's, their art. That's indeed uh, correct and 100% I agree because 
I, 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 I once made a report uh, for the CNN network about Al Galalib and how they were our you know, only way for the outer world to connect Kuwait to the outer world. And I had to go through uh, some of the documents and books of uh, Colonel uh, Dixon, you know, your grandfather, you know, because I had, you know, really go for the sources of the information right. and which was documented and certified. Definitely that's something amazing. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Free, uh, this is not your uh, and your sister, you know, uh, Mrs. Penny, first visit to Kuwait, definitely. You know, so how often do you go, uh, do you travel to Kuwait? <laughs> <laughs> um, we came out in 1970, as I said, okay. when, when I was a student, yeah. uh, and then in 2020, okay. uh, ESA and the National Council of Arts and Letters nice. invited us out uh, four years ago, just before COVID. We were very lucky, yeah. uh, because it was a trip that happened normally. Uh, but another another four weeks mm -hmm. and we would have been in serious yeah. trouble. And th uh, so it's, it's, it's a big gap between 1970 yes, and, and ah. 2020. But in between, yeah. in between, my mother Zara had been out, my sister Penny had been out. Yeah. Uh, Zara had been out with Penny uh, and sometimes Penny came out on her own and also Zara's brother, okay. uh, Saud, yeah. Uh, Umar Saud, oh, Saud. Sir, yeah. uh, he came out as well, particularly when Dame Violet Umar Saud was getting very old okay. uh, and uh, she wasn't able to run the house so well. Okay. They came out to help her and to sit with nice. her yeah. and there were people from the uh, English community and from the Kuwaiti community who Please also help. helped to okay. look after oh, that's really uh, Umar nice. Saud in her old age. Yeah. Uh, so Penny Penny came out several times, okay. and there was one time uh, that she came out with mother uh, in connection. There, it was a trip sponsored by one of the Kuwaiti communications companies, uh, and they, were, they came out then, and they saw a lot of their old friends mm -hmm. because all sorts of meetings were arranged nice, for them. Nice. Um, but my, own, my, my next trip was 2020 when ESA oh, okay. had organized Amazing. all sorts Amazing. of meetings for our old friends. That's, that's, uh, that's really lovely. ESA always, you know, uh, her, there for us, you know, for, for anything within the within Ku UK and Kuwait, definitely. And it, and it was wo wonderful to be back and to see the house. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, uh, Indeed, on that point, you know, we have a, a, a very uh, short report, you know, and a very great heritage to see in that report. After the British residency moved to their new building in the Dasman area, this building became the residence of the family of Colonel Harold Dixon, his wife, Mrs. Violet Dixon, and their children. This friendly family, who loved Kuwait and the Kuwaitis, lived in it until 1990. The owner of this house, Mrs. Violet Dixon, left the house during the invasion and died in Britain. After the death of Mrs. Violet Dixon, Um Saud, the wife of the British resident, Colonel Harold Dixon, in 1992, this building was closed and reopened several times for temporary periods to be visited by some British figures, including their royal highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duke of York. In 1999, the National Council for Culture, Art and Letters began to restore this house to become one of the preserved historical buildings. On January 23, 2001, the building was opened under the name of the Dixon House Cultural Center. <laughs> Welcome back, dear viewers. We saw this beautiful uh, heritage, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, in that uh, short little report. Mr. Isa Deshti, what is the historical significance of the Dixon's house? 
you know, the most important thing of the Dixon House because mm. we are lucky to have this old buildings from mm. the old Kuwait city. Yeah. This is the, the first point. Second point, the, the, the Dixon House, it's not just a normal house. It was the British politic agent house mm -hmm. and from 1904 yeah. to, uh, to the 19 beginning of the 30 before they are building the new agency. It's now the British Embassy in Desman Palace in Desman yeah. area. Uh, so uh, the British politic agent, after that it's Dixon House, it's, uh, it's the, resi the residency, it's the, the official office uh, for the agent in Kuwait, it's the first post office yeah. uh, uh, headquarter there, it's the first British hospital, it was there. Okay. So it's many, many, it's like, uh, full of history. Made and a viable and, yes. you know, live. And, yeah. and, and you like this, the, the different and strange design mm -hmm. that's not uh, a Kuwaiti design, exactly. it's a exactly. Kuranali design yeah. that was used by British government. Okay. And you can find this uh, design, it's little, similar 70 to 80 percent and like the uh, British uh, politic residency in Bushehr or in Bahrain or okay, Oman before and this time we are lucky we are just only the country that we are keeping this house and we are, we uh, are preparing still, yeah. and maintain us as, it. as yeah. uh, a museum and the, the National Council of Art and Literatures they are do a very great job to keep continuous maintain us and repairing uh, uh, this house so this is in now the Dixon house it's come one of the most important icons and land, landmark between the Kuwaiti British relations. Amazing, amazing. Definitely, it's a, it's a monument, you know, for us, honestly. Although it's not gigantic, but it still it has a deep impact in our hearts. Yeah. And and uh, a question for you, Mr. Freed. How do you see your relationship with the people of Kuwait, especially since we know that your relationship with the Al Hindal family? and uh, it has not been served since its beginning and continues to this day for nearly 100 years. I mean, between uh, your family and uh, Al-Hindal. We, we have this long relationship with the Hindals. Mm. My grandfather, Umar mm. Saud's husband, Abu Saud, yeah. uh, Colonel Dixon, he knew the Hindals from the time of the First World War, oh. that he came across the Hindal family uh, uh, during the First World War mm -hmm. as loyal, uh, reliable, trustworthy mm -hmm. men in, in Iraq mm -hmm. because the Hindal yeah, family they, they come from yeah. the Munt Muntafiq tribe yeah. from Iraq. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he liked them in Iraq mm -hmm. uh, and he helped them. And then uh, in the 1930s, uh, one of the Hindals, Faisal Hindal, mm -hmm. came to the residency for, uh, to, to see uh, Colonel Dixon and, okay. and Umar Saud, and he fell ill. Oh. He was there in a meeting, like okay. we are now. And all of a and, sudden he... And all of a sudden yeah. he, he was ill. Okay. Uh, and it turned out that he had measles, oh. which is a, you know, a serious illness. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, one of the things which our family is very proud of is that they they genuinely loved the Arabs and so Umar Saud nursed Faisal Hindal okay, in the one of the bedrooms of Dixon okay. House for three weeks. For well, three weeks? <laughs> wow. Until he got better. Really? So she saved his life? Yes. Okay. Uh, and there, there was a doctor but she was she did the nursing. Yeah absolutely. Uh, you know, absolutely. Everything that was Needs needed. Needs a follow-up. Yeah. Uh, she did that herself. Okay. Um, and this is something, and Faisal Hindal re recovered completely. Exactly. And he, ga he gave her the only thing that he had, because this is before oil, yeah. which was a dagger. Oh, really? A dagger? She oh, used to that's, have that's on very honorable gift. Yeah. Yeah. On display mm -hmm. in Dixon House mm -hmm. uh, for many years afterwards. I, mm -hmm. don't know if, I don't know where it is now. I don't think we have it, and I don't think the house has it. But she gave her his dagger. And then in 1941, yeah. Um, D Colonel Dixon gave the Hindal family a, a chitti, uh, okay. a, a letter, a letter which, yeah. which he could, which they could show to any uh, any English official, yeah. any army officer, okay. saying he will recognize them. This man is this man is a good man. Good man. He wants to bring his herds into Kuwait. Oh, okay, so leave him. Uh, and, then, and then go back to yeah. Iraq, we yeah. know, to follow the rains and to yeah, follow the absolutely, grass. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he is trustworthy, you can let him through. And the Hindals were very pleased with this letter. Mm -hmm. and, and when Mother and Penny 
came out in 1999, I think it was, sponsored by the mobile telecommunications company. Mm -hmm. They had a call to their hotel mm -hmm. from the Hindals really? to say, we have a certificate for you. Okay. And they produced a certificate saying, uh, many years of friendship. Uh, you, in 1941, you gave us a certificate, mm -hmm. and we still have it. And here is our certificate to commemorate the, the long friendship between us. Amazing, um, amazing. That's really and, something. And in four years ago, uh, in four years ago, we were invited down to the uh, the uh, Hindal family's yeah. stud farm near Wafra, yeah. and they gave me a horse. Oh. <laughs> uh, which that's, they are looking after. That's, that's uh, a horse nice. called Hesse and a foal called Dixon. Okay. Um, and Jabba, Jabba Hindal uh, was there with us and is, has been there with us uh, on this new that's, trip. That's, that's very uh, And Mubarak Hindal, yeah. Saba Hindal yeah. were there. Uh, so we have a horse and we have pictures of the horse. Of the horse. <laughs> um, and they have been looking after it for us. And so the, the family connection continues and it's something that we are very proud of and very pleased with, and the Hindals have been very kind to us. Absolutely, and, and uh, you really deserve it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we are out of time, you know, but uh, uh, there is a question about the National Library of Kuwait, and uh, which uh, hold, will hold for the descendants of Colonel uh, Dixon. So what about that activity? Yes. But unfortunately, we don't have time. Quickly. In, Tomorrow, in, in, inshallah, in, in, we are invite everybody to the National Concert of Art uh, for the National Library of Kuwait at 6.30 yeah. night. At 6.30. Uh, Mr. Stephen and Mrs. Penny will give a lecture Amazing. In, about their memories uh, in Kuwait. We are invite everybody to enjoy this. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Stephen Free, thank you very much. The grandson of uh, Colonel uh, Dixon. Thank you. Thank you. I Isa Zakaria Dashti, uh, well known uh, the research of the uh, Kuwaiti and UK uh, relationship and national re relationship. Thank you very much. The viewers, that was Isa Yahya Dashti, a British Kuwait researcher and general security of Kuwait, and Mr. Stephen Freed, grandson of British political agent in Kuwait, Colonel Harold Dixon. We'll go for a break and we'll be back.